What is the largest crater on the moon? The largest crater on the moon is Bailey. Its diameter is 184 miles, 296 kilometers. Was Polaris always the North Star? Earth has had several North Stars. Earth slowly wobbles on its axis as it spins. This motion is called Precession Earth traces a circle in the sky over a period of 26,000 years. In pharaonic times the North Star was Thuban, today it is Polaris, around 14,000 CE it will be Vega. What is the difference between zero gravity and microgravity? Zero gravity is the absence of gravity. A condition in which the effects of gravity are not felt, weightlessness. Microgravity is a condition of very low gravity, especially approaching weightlessness. On a spaceship, while in zero microgravity, objects would fall freely and float weightlessly. Both terms, however, are technically incorrect. The gravitation in orbit is only slightly less than the gravitation on Earth. A spacecraft and its contents continuously fall toward Earth. It is the spacecraft's immense forward speed that appears to make Earth's surface curve away as the vehicle falls toward it. The continuous falling seems to eliminate the weight of everything inside the spacecraft. For this reason, the condition is sometimes referred to as weightlessness or zero gravity. Which star is the closest to Earth? The Sun, at a distance of 92,955,900 miles, 149,598,000 kilometers, is the closest star to Earth. After the Sun, the closest stars are the members of the triple star system. Known as Alpha Centauri, Alpha Centauri A, Alpha Centauri B and Alpha Centauri C, sometimes called Proxima Centauri. They are 4.3 light years away. Which galaxy is closest to us? The Andromeda Galaxy is the galaxy closest to the Milky Way Galaxy, where Earth is located. It is estimated to be 2.2 million light-years away from Earth. Bigger than the Milky Way, Andromeda is a spiral-shaped galaxy that is also the brightest in Earth's sky. From where do comets originate? According to a theory developed by Dutch astronomer Jan Oert, 1900 to 1992, 
there is a large cloud, now called the Oort cloud, of gas, dust, and comets orbiting beyond Pluto out to perhaps 100,000 astronomical units, oh. Occasional stars passing close to this cloud disturb some of the comets from their orbits. Some fall inwards toward the sun. Comets, sometimes called dirty snowballs, are made up mostly of ice, with some dust mixed in. When a comet moves closer to the sun, the dust and ice of the core or nucleus, heats up, producing a tail of material that trails along behind it. The tail is pushed out by the solar wind and almost always points away from the sun. Most comets have highly elliptical orbits that carry them around the sun and then fling them back out to the outer reaches of the solar system, never to return. Occasionally, however, a close passage by a comet near one of the planets can alter a comet's orbit, making it stay in the middle or inner solar system. Such a comet is called a short-period comet because it passes close to the Sun at regular intervals. The most famous short-period comet is Comet Halley, which reaches perihelion. The point in its orbit that is closest to the Sun, about every 76 years. Comet Inc., with an orbital period of 3.3 years, is another short period comet. What is the difference between a hunter's moon and a harvest moon? The harvest moon is the full moon nearest the autumnal equinox, on or about September 23rd. It is followed by a period of several successive days when the moon rises soon after sunset. In the southern hemisphere the harvest moon is the full moon closest to the vernal equinox, on or about March 21st. This gives farmers extra hours of light for harvesting crops. The next full moon after the harvest moon is called the hunter's moon. Who are the fathers of space flight? In 1903, Konstantiny Tsiolkovsky, 1857-1935, a Russian high school teacher, completed the first scientific paper on the use of rockets for space travel. Several years later, Robert H. Goddard 1882-1945 of the United States and Hermann Oberth, 1894-1989, of Germany awakened wider scientific interest in space travel. These three men worked individually on many of the technical problems of rocketry and space travel. They are known, therefore, as the fathers of space flight. In 1919, Goddard wrote the paper, a method of reaching extreme altitudes, which explained how rockets could be used to explore the upper atmosphere and described a way to send a rocket to the moon. During the 1920s Tsiolkovsky wrote a series of new studies that included detailed descriptions of multi-stage rockets. In 1923, Oberth wrote the rocket into interplanetary space. 
which discussed the technical problems of space flight and also described what a spaceship would be like. What is the moon's tail that astronomers have discovered? A glowing 15,000 mile, 24,000 kilometer, long tail of sodium atom streams from the moon. The faint, orange glow of sodium cannot be seen by the naked eye but it is detectable with the use of instruments. Astronomers are not certain of the source of these sodium atoms. For whom is the Hubble Space Telescope named? Edwin Powell Hubble, 1889-1953, was an American astronomer known for his studies of galaxies. His study of nebulae, or clouds the faint. Unresolved luminous patches in the sky showed that some of them were large groups of many stars. Hubble classified galaxies by their shapes as being spiral, elliptical, or irregular. Hubble's law establishes a relationship between the velocity of recession of a galaxy and its distance. The speed at which a galaxy is moving away from our solar system. Measured by its redshift, the shift of its light to longer wavelengths, presumed to be caused by the Doppler effect, is directly proportional to the galaxy's distance from it. The Hubble Space Telescope was deployed by the Space Shuttle Discovery on April 25, 1990. The telescope which would be free of distortions caused by Earth's atmosphere was designed to see deeper into space than any telescope on land. However, on June 27, 1990, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration announced that the telescope had a defect in one of its mirrors that prevented it from properly focusing. Although other instruments, including one designed to make observations in ultraviolet light, were still operating. Nearly 40% of the telescope's experiments had to be postponed until repairs were made. On December 2, 1993, astronauts were able to make the necessary repairs. Four of Hubble's six gyroscopes were replaced as well as two solar panels. Hubble's primary camera, which had a flawed mirror, was also replaced. Since that mission four other servicing missions have been conducted, dramatically improving the HSD's capabilities. Why does the Moon always keep the same face toward Earth? Only one side of the moon is seen because it always rotates in exactly the same length of time that it takes to revolve about Earth. This combination of motions, called captured rotation, means that it always keeps the same side toward Earth. Is the moon really blue during a blue moon?
although a bluish looking moon can result from effects of Earth's atmosphere. The term blue moon does not refer to the color of the moon. For example, the phenomenon was widely observed in North America on September 26, 1950, due to Canadian forest fires that had scattered high altitude dust, which refracted or absorbed certain wavelengths of light. The popular definition of a blue moon is the second full moon in a single calendar month. Based on this definition, a blue moon occurs, on average, every 2.72 years. Since 29.53 days pass between full moons, a synodial month, there is never a blue moon in February. On rare occasions, a blue moon can be seen twice in one year, but only in certain parts of the world. Blue moons will next occur, August 31, 2012 July 31, 2015 January 31, 2018 March 31. 2018 October 31, 2020 August 31, 2023 May 31, 2026 December 31, 2028 September 30, 2031 July 31, 2034 However, this is a new definition of a blue moon based on an article that appeared in Sky and Telescope in 1946. The older definition of a blue moon, found in the main farmer's almanac dating back to 1819, describes a blue moon as the third full moon in a season of four full moons. To further complicate the calculation of a blue moon, Astronomers define the start of a season based on the actual position of the sun throughout its annual orbit. The seasons will not be of equal length according to this definition. The main farmer's almanac preferred to define each season as being of equal length. Therefore, determining the occurrence of a blue moon based on the traditional definition will depend on whether the astronomical definition of a season or the main farmer's almanac definition is used. Why do lunar eclipses happen? A lunar eclipse occurs only during a full moon when the moon is on one side of Earth. The sun is on the opposite side, and all three bodies are aligned in the same plane. In this alignment Earth blocks the sun's rays to cast a shadow on the moon. In a total lunar eclipse the moon seems to disappear from the sky when the whole moon passes through the umbra, or total shadow, created by Earth. A total lunar eclipse may last up to 1 hour and 40 minutes. If only part of the moon enters the umbra, a partial eclipse occurs. A penumbral eclipse takes place if all or part of the moon passes through the penumbra. Partial shadow or shade, without touching the umbra. It is difficult to detect this type of eclipse from Earth. From the moon one could see that Earth blocked only part of the sun. What did NASA mean when it said Voyager 1 and 2 would take a grand tour of the planets? Once every 176 years the giant outer planets Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, 
and Neptune align themselves in such a pattern that a spacecraft launched from Earth to Jupiter at just the right time might be able to visit the other three planets on the same mission. A technique called gravity assist used each planet's gravity as a power boost to point Voyager toward the next planet. The first opportune year for the Grand Tour was 1977. What are the differences between reflecting and refracting telescopes? Reflecting telescopes capture light using a mirror while refracting telescopes capture light with a lens. The advantages of reflecting telescopes are, 1, they collect light with a mirror so there is no color fringing. And 2, since a mirror can be supported at the back there is no size limit. In an effort to alleviate the problem of color fringing always associated with lenses. Isaac Newton built a reflecting telescope in 1668 that collected light with mirrors. Which stars are the brightest? The brightness of a star is called its magnitude. Apparent magnitude is how bright a star appears to the naked eye. The lower the magnitude, the brighter the star. On a clear night, stars of about magnitude 16 can be seen with the naked eye. Large telescopes can detect objects as faint as 127. Very bright objects have negative magnitudes, the sun is minus 26.8. How hot is the sun? The center of the sun is about 27 million degrees Fahrenheit 15 million degrees Celsius. The surface, or photosphere, of the sun is about 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit 5,500 degrees Celsius. Magnetic anomalies in the photosphere cause cooler regions that appear to be darker than the surrounding surface. These sunspots are about 6,700 degrees Fahrenheit 4,000 degrees Celsius. The sun's layer of lower atmosphere, the chromosphere, is only a few thousand miles thick. At the base, the chromosphere is about 7,800 degrees Fahrenheit 4,300 degrees Celsius, but its temperature rises with altitude to the corona. The sun's outer layer of atmosphere, which has a temperature of about 1,800,000 degrees Fahrenheit 1 million degrees Celsius. Which well-known star is part of the Little Dipper? The Little Dipper, part of the constellation Ursa Minor, is similar to the Big Dipper. It also has seven bright stars that form the shape of a ladle. Polaris, the North Star, is at the end of the handle of the Little Dipper. What are moonquakes?
Similar to earthquakes, moonquakes are a result of the constant shifting of molten or partly molten material in the interior of the moon. These moonquakes are usually very weak. Other moonquakes may be caused by the impact of meteorites on the moon's surface. Still others occur at regular intervals during a lunar cycle. Suggesting that gravitational forces from Earth have an effect on the Moon similar to ocean tides. Who invented the telescope? Hans Lippershi, C. 1570-1619, a German-Dutch lens grinder and spectacle maker. Is generally credited with inventing the telescope in 1608 because he was the first scientist to apply for a patent. Two other inventors, Zacharias Janssen and Jacob Matthias, also developed telescopes. Modern historians consider Lippershey and Janssen as the two likely candidates for the title of inventor of the telescope, with Lippershey possessing the strongest claim. Lippershey used his telescope for observing grounded objects from a distance. In 1609, Galileo also developed his own refractor telescope for astronomical studies. Although small by today's standards, the telescope enabled Galileo to observe the Milky Way and to identify blemishes on the Moon's surface as craters. Who was the first man in space? Yuri Gagarin, 1934-1968, a Soviet cosmonaut, became the first man in space when he made a full orbit of Earth in Vostok I on April 12, 1961. Gagarin's flight lasted only 1 hour and 48 minutes. But as the first man in space, he became an international hero. Partly because of this Soviet success, U.S. President John F. Kennedy, 1917-1963, announced on May 25, 1961, that the United States would land a man on the moon before the end of the decade. The United States took its first step toward that goal when it launched the first. American into orbit on February 20, 1962. Astronaut John H. Glenn Jr., 1921. Completed three orbits in Friendship 7 and traveled about 81,000 miles, 130,329 kilometers. Prior to this, on May 5, 1961, Alan B. Shepard Jr., 1923 to 1998 became the first American to pilot a space flight aboard Freedom 7. This suborbital flight reached an altitude of 116.5 miles, 187.45 kilometers. What is the Genesis Rock? The Genesis Rock is a lunar rock brought to Earth by Apollo 15. It is approximately 4.15 billion years old. Which is only 0.5 billion years younger than the generally accepted age of the Moon.
What is meant by the phrase greening of the galaxy? The expression means the spreading of human life, technology, and culture through interstellar space and eventually across the entire Milky Way galaxy, Earth's home galaxy. Where is the North Star? If an imaginary line is drawn from the North Pole into space, it will reach a star called Polaris, or the North Star, less than one degree away from the line. As Earth rotates on its axis, Polaris acts as a pivot point around which all the stars visible in the northern hemisphere appear to move, while Polaris itself remains motionless. Identifying Polaris was important for navigation since in locating Polaris it was possible to identify north. In addition, the angle of Polaris above the horizon indicates latitude on Earth. What is the Milky Way? The Milky Way is a hazy band of light that can be seen encircling the night sky. This light comes from the stars that make up the Milky Way galaxy. The galaxy to which the Sun and Earth belong. Galaxies are huge systems of stars separated from one another by largely empty space. Astronomers estimate that the Milky Way galaxy contains at least 100 billion stars and is about 100. 000 light years in diameter. The galaxy is shaped like a compact disk with a central bulge. Or nucleus, and spiral arms curving out from the center. What is a close encounter of the third kind? UFO expert J. Alan Hinek, 1910-1986, developed the following scale to describe encounters. With extraterrestrial beings or vessels. Close encounter of the first kind sighting of a UFO at close range with no other physical evidence. Close encounter of the second kind sighting of a UFO at close range. But with some kind of proof, such as a photograph, or an artifact from a UFO. Close encounter of the third kind sighting of an actual extraterrestrial being. Close encounter of the fourth kind abduction by an extraterrestrial spacecraft. What is the largest constellation? Hydra is the largest constellation extending from Gemini to the south of Virgo. It has a recognizable long line of stars. The name Hydra is derived from the water snake monster killed by Hercules in ancient mythology. What is the very large array, VLA? and what information have we learned from it?
The Very Large Array VLA, is one of the world's premier astronomical radio observatories. The VLA consists of 27 antennas arranged in a huge Y pattern up to 22 miles, 36 kilometers. Across roughly one and a half times the size of Washington, D.C. Each antenna is 81 feet. 25 meters, in diameter, they are combined electronically to give the resolution of an antenna 22 miles. 36 kilometers, across, with the sensitivity of a dish 422 feet, 130 meters, in diameter. Each of the 27 radio telescopes in the VLA is the size of a house and can be moved on train tracks. In its 22nd year of operation, the VLA has been one of the most productive observatories. With more than 2,200 scientists using it for more than 10,000 separate observing projects. The VLA has been used to discover water on the planet Mercury, radio bright coronae around ordinary stars. Microquasars in our galaxy, gravitationally induced Einstein rings around distant galaxies. And radio counterparts to cosmologically distant gamma ray bursts. The vast size of the VLA has allowed astronomers to study the details of superfast cosmic jets. And even map the center of our galaxy. When was the Outer Space Treaty signed? The United Nations Outer Space Treaty was signed on January 23, 1967. The treaty provides a framework for the exploration and sharing of outer space. It governs the outer space activities of nations that wish to exploit and make use of space. The Moon, and other celestial bodies. It is based on a humanist and pacifist philosophy and on the principle of the non-appropriation of space and the freedom that all nations have to explore and use space. A very large number of countries have signed this agreement. Including those from the Western Alliance, the former Eastern Bloc, and non-aligned countries. Space law, or those rules governing the space activities of various countries, international organizations, and private industries, has been evolving since 1957, when the General Assembly of the United Nations created the Committee on the Peaceful Uses of Outer Space, COPYAS. One of its subcommittees was instrumental in drawing up the 1967 Outer Space Treaty. What is an astrolabe? Invented by the Greeks or Alexandrians around 100 B. C. An astrolabe is a two dimensional working model of the heavens, with sites for observations. It consists of two concentric, flat disks, one fixed, representing the observer on Earth, the other moving, which can be rotated to represent the appearance of the celestial sphere at a given moment, given latitude, date, and time. The observer can read off the altitude and azimuth of the sun, the brightest stars, and the planets. By measuring the altitude of a particular body, one can find the time. 
The astrolabe can also be used to find times of sunrise. Sunset, twilight, or the height of a tower or depth of a well. After 1600, it was replaced by the sextant and other more accurate instruments. How many constellations are there and how were they named? Constellations are groups of stars that seem to form some particular shape. Such as that of a person, animal, or object. They only appear to form this shape and be close to each other from Earth. In actuality, the stars in a constellation are often very distant from each other. There are 88 recognized constellations whose boundaries were defined in the 1920s by the International Astronomical Union. Various cultures in all parts of the world have had their own constellations. However, because modern science is predominantly a product of Western culture. Many of the constellations represent characters from Greek and Roman mythology. When Europeans began to explore the southern hemisphere in the 16th and 17th centuries, they derived some of the new star patterns from the technological wonders of their time, such as the telescope. Names of constellations are usually given in Latin. Individual stars in a constellation are usually designated with Greek letters in the order of brightness. The brightest star is Alpha, the second brightest is Beta, and so on. The genitive, or possessive, form of the constellation name is used. Thus Alpha Orionis is the brightest star of the constellation Orion. What is the most massive star? The Pistol Star is both the brightest and most massive star known. Located 25,000 light years away in the area of the constellation Sagittarius. This young, Oneto 3 million year old, star is as bright as 10 million suns and may have weighed 200 times the mass of the sun at one point in its young life. What was the Tunguska event? In June 30, 1908, a violent explosion occurred in the atmosphere over the Podkamenea-Tunguska River in a remote part of central Siberia. The blast's consequences were similar to a hydrogen bomb going off, leveling thousands of square miles of forest. The shock of the explosion was heard more than 600 miles, 960 kilometers, away. A number of theories have been proposed to account for this event. Some people thought that a large meteorite or a piece of antimatter had fallen to Earth. But a meteorite, composed of rock and metal, would have created a crater and none was found at the impact site. There are no high radiation levels in the area that would have resulted from the collision of antimatter and matter. Two other theories include a mini black hole striking Earth or the crash of an extraterrestrial spaceship. 
However, a mini black hole would have passed through Earth and there is no record of a corresponding explosion on the other side of the world. As for the spaceship, no wreckage of such a craft was ever found. The most likely cause of the explosion was the entry into the atmosphere of a piece of a comet. Which would have produced a large fireball and blast wave. Since a comet is composed primarily of ice. The fragment would have melted during its passage through Earth's atmosphere, leaving no impact crater and no debris. Since the Tunguska event coincided with Earth's passage through the orbit of Comet Inc. The explosion could have been caused by a piece of that comet. What are the craters on the moon that are named for the famous Curie family? Curie named for Pierre Curie, 1859-1906, French chemist and Nobel Prize winner. Sklodowska the family name of Marie Curie, 1867-1934, French physical chemist and Nobel Prize winner. Joliot named for physicist Frederick Joliot Curie, 1900-1958. Pierre and Marie's son-in-law and Nobel Prize winner. Where are asteroids found? The asteroids, also called the minor planets, are smaller than any of the eight major planets in the solar system and are not satellites of any major planet. The term asteroid means star-like because asteroids appear to be points of light when seen through a telescope. Most asteroids are located between Mars and Jupiter. Between 2.1 and 3.3 AUS, astronomical units, from the Sun. Ceres, the largest and first to be discovered. Was found by Giuseppe Piazzi on January 1, 1801, and has a diameter of 582 miles, 936 kilometers. A second asteroid, Pallas, was discovered in 1802. Since then, astronomers have identified more than 18,000 asteroids and have established orbits for about 5,000 of them. Some of these have diameters of only 0.62 mile, 1 kilometer. Originally, astronomers thought the asteroids were remnants of a planet that had been destroyed. Now they believe asteroids to be material that never became a planet. Possibly because it was affected by Jupiter's strong gravity. Not all asteroids are in this main asteroid belt. Three groups of asteroids, the near-Earth asteroids, NEAs, reside in the inner solar system. The Aden asteroids have orbits that lie primarily inside Earth's orbit. However, at their farthest point from the Sun, these asteroids may cross Earth's orbit. The Apollo asteroids cross Earth's orbit, some come even closer than the Moon. The Amor asteroids cross the orbit of Mars, and some come close to Earth's orbit. The Trojan asteroids move in virtually the same orbit as Jupiter but at points 60 degrees ahead or 60 degrees behind the planet. 
In 1977 Charles Cowell discovered an object now known as Chiron orbiting between Saturn and Uranus. Originally catalogued as an asteroid, Chiron was later observed to have a coma. A gaseous halo, and it may be reclassified as a comet. What is the Big Dipper? The Big Dipper is a group of seven stars that are part of the constellation Ursa Major. They appear to form a sort of bowl, composed of four stars, with a long handle, composed of three stars. The group is known as the Plough in Great Britain. The Big Dipper is almost always visible in the Northern Hemisphere. It serves as a convenient reference point when locating other stars, for example. An imaginary line drawn from the two end stars of the Dipper leads to Polaris, the North Star. What is the message attached to the Voyager spacecraft? Voyager 1, launched September 5, 1977, and Voyager 2, launched August 20, 1977. Were unmanned space probes designed to explore the outer planets and then travel out of the solar system? A gold coated copper phonograph record containing a message to any possible extraterrestrial civilization that they might encounter is attached to each spacecraft. The record contains both video and audio images of Earth and the civilization that sent this message to the stars. The record begins with 118 pictures. These show Earth's position in the galaxy, a key to the mathematical notation used in other pictures. The Sun, other planets in the solar system, human anatomy and reproduction. Various types of terrain, seashore, desert, mountains, examples of vegetation and animal life. People of both sexes and of all ages and ethnic types engaged in a number of activities, structures. From grass huts to the Taj Mahal to the Sydney Opera House, showing diverse architectural styles. And means of transportation, including roads, bridges, cars, planes, and space vehicles. The pictures are followed by greetings from Jimmy Carter, who was then President of the United States. And Kurt Waldheim, then Secretary General of the United Nations. Brief messages in 54 languages, ranging from ancient Sumerian to English are included, as is a song of the humpback whale. The next section is a series of sounds common to Earth. These include thunder, rain, wind, fire, barking dogs, footsteps, laughter. Human speech, the cry of an infant, and the sounds of a human heartbeat and human brainwaves. The record concludes with approximately 90 minutes of music, Earth's greatest hits. These musical selections were drawn from a broad spectrum of cultures and include such diverse pieces as a pygmy girl's initiation song, bagpipe music from Azerbaijan, the Fifth Symphony. First movement by Ludwig von Beethoven, and Johnny B. Good by Chuck Berry. It will be tens. 
or even hundreds of thousands of years before either Voyager comes close to another star, and perhaps the message will never be heard. But it is a sign of humanity's hope to encounter life elsewhere in the universe. What is the message attached to the Voyager spacecraft? Voyager 1, launched September 5, 1977, and Voyager 2, launched August 20, 1977. Were unmanned space probes designed to explore the outer planets and then travel out of the solar system? A gold-coated copper phonograph record containing a message to any possible extraterrestrial civilization that they might encounter is attached to each spacecraft. The record contains both video and audio images of Earth and the civilization that sent this message to the stars. The record begins with 118 pictures. These show Earth's position in the galaxy, a key to the mathematical notation used in other pictures. The Sun, other planets in the solar system, human anatomy and reproduction. Various types of terrain, seashore, desert, mountains, examples of vegetation and animal life. People of both sexes and of all ages and ethnic types engaged in a number of activities, structures. From grass huts to the Taj Mahal to the Sydney Opera House, showing diverse architectural styles and means of transportation, including roads, bridges, cars, planes, and space vehicles. The pictures are followed by greetings from Jimmy Carter, who was then President of the United States, and Kurt Waldheim, then Secretary General of the United Nations. Brief messages in 54 languages, ranging from ancient Sumerian to English are included, as is a song of the humpback whale. The next section is a series of sounds common to Earth. These include thunder, rain, wind, fire, barking dogs, footsteps, laughter. Human speech, the cry of an infant, and the sounds of a human heartbeat and human brain waves. The record concludes with approximately 90 minutes of music, Earth's greatest hits. These musical selections were drawn from a broad spectrum of cultures and include such diverse pieces as a Pygmy Girl's initiation song, bagpipe music from Azerbaijan, the Fifth Symphony. First movement by Ludwig von Beethoven, and Johnny B. Good by Chuck Berry. It will be tens or even hundreds of thousands of years before either Voyager comes close to another star, and perhaps the message will never be heard. But it is a sign of humanity's hope to encounter life elsewhere in the universe. Which astronauts have walked on the moon? Twelve astronauts have walked on the moon. Each Apollo flight had a crew of three. One crew member remained in orbit in the command service module. CSM while the other two actually landed on the moon. Apollo 11, July 16 to 24, 1969 Neil A. Armstrong Edwin E. Aldrin Jr. Michael Collins, CSM pilot. 
did not walk on the moon, Apollo 12, November 14 to 24, 1969. Charles P. Conrad Allen L. Bean Richard F. Gordon Jr. CSM pilot did not walk on the moon, Apollo 14, January 31 to February 9, 1971. Alan B. Shepard. Junior Edgar D. Mitchell Stewart A. Rusa, CSM pilot, did not walk on the moon. Apollo 15, July 26 to August 7, 1971. David R. Scott James B. Irwin Alfred M. Worden, CSM pilot, did not walk on the moon. Apollo 16, April 16 to 27. 1972 John W. Young Charles M. Duke Jr. Thomas K. Mattingly, 2, CSM pilot. Did not walk on the moon, Apollo 17, December 7-19, 7 1972 Eugene A. Cernan Harrison H. Schmidt Ronald E. Which astronauts have walked on the moon? Twelve astronauts have walked on the moon. Each Apollo flight had a crew of three. One crew member remained in orbit in the command service module. CSM while the other two actually landed on the moon. Apollo 11, July 16 to 24, 1969 Neil A. Armstrong Edwin E. Aldrin Jr. Michael Collins, CSM pilot. Did not walk on the moon, Apollo 12, November 14 to 24, 1969 Charles P. Conrad Allen L. Bean Richard F. Gordon Jr. CSM pilot, did not walk on the moon, Apollo 14, January 31 to February 9, 1971 Alan B. Shepard. Junior Edgar D. Mitchell Stewart A. Rusa, CSM pilot, did not walk on the moon. Apollo 15, July 26 to August 7, 1971 David R. Scott James B. Irwin Alfred M. Worden. CSM pilot, did not walk on the moon. Apollo 16, April 16 to 27, 1972 John W. Young Charles M. Duke Jr. Thomas K. Mattingly, 2, CSM pilot. Did not walk on the moon, Apollo 17, December 7 to 19, 1972 Eugene A. Cernan Harrison H. Schmidt Ronald E. Evans, CSM pilot, did not walk on the moon, which man's space flight was the longest? Dr. Valerich Polyakov manned a flight to the space station Mir on January 8, 1994. He returned. Aboard Soyuz TM-20 on March 22, 1995, making the total time in space equal 438 days and 18 hours. Evans, CSM pilot, did not walk on the moon, which manned space flight was the longest? Dr. Valerich Polyakov manned a flight to the space station Mir on January 8, 1994. He returned. Aboard Soyuz TM-20 on March 22, 1995, 
making the total time in space equal 438 days and 18 hours. When and what was the first animal sent into orbit? A small female dog named Leica, aboard the Soviet Sputnik 2, launched November 3, 1957. Was the first animal sent into orbit. This event followed the successful Soviet launch on October 4, 1957, of Sputnik 1. The first man-made satellite ever placed in orbit. Leica was placed in a pressurized compartment within a capsule that weighed 1,103 pounds, 500 kilograms. After a few days in orbit, she died, and Sputnik 2 re-entered Earth's atmosphere on April 14. 1958 Some sources list the dog as a Russian Samoyed Leica named Kudyevka or Lemenchik. When and what was the first animal sent into orbit? A small female dog named Leica, aboard the Soviet Sputnik 2, launched November 3, 1957. Was the first animal sent into orbit. This event followed the successful Soviet launch on October 4, 1957, of Sputnik 1. The first man-made satellite ever placed in orbit. Leica was placed in a pressurized compartment within a capsule that weighed 1,103 pounds, 500 kilograms. After a few days in orbit, she died and Sputnik 2 re-entered Earth's atmosphere on April 14. 1958 Some sources list the dog as a Russian Samoyed Leica named Kudyevka or Lemenchik. What were the first monkeys and chimpanzees in space? On a United States Jupiter flight on December 12, 1958, a squirrel monkey named Old Reliable was sent into space, but not into orbit. The monkey drowned during recovery. On another Jupiter flight, on May 28, 1959, two female monkeys were sent 300 miles, 482.7 kilometers high. Abel was a 6 pound, 2.7 kilogram, rhesus monkey, and Baker was an 11 ounce, 0.3 kilogram squirrel monkey. Both were recovered alive. A chimpanzee named Ham was used on a Mercury flight on January 31st. 1961 Ham was launched to a height of 157 miles, 253 kilometers, into space but did not go into orbit. His capsule reached a maximum speed of 5,857 miles, 9,426 kilometers, per hour and landed 422 miles. 679 kilometers, downrange in the Atlantic Ocean, where he was recovered unharmed. On November 29, 1961, the United States placed a chimpanzee named Enos into orbit and recovered him alive after two complete orbits around Earth. Like the Soviets, who usually used dogs, 
the United States had to obtain information on the effects of space flight on living beings before they could actually launch a human into space. What were the first monkeys and chimpanzees in space? On a United States Jupiter flight on December 12, 1958, a squirrel monkey named Old Reliable was sent into space, but not into orbit. The monkey drowned during recovery. On another Jupiter flight, on May 28, 1959, two female monkeys were sent 300 miles, 482.7 kilometers high. Abel was a 6 pound, 2.7 kilogram, rhesus monkey, and Baker was an 11 ounce, 0.3 kilogram squirrel monkey. Both were recovered alive. A chimpanzee named Ham was used on a Mercury flight on January 31st. 1961 Ham was launched to a height of 157 miles, 253 kilometers, into space but did not go into orbit. His capsule reached a maximum speed of 5,857 miles, 9,426 kilometers, per hour and landed 422 miles. 679 kilometers, downrange in the Atlantic Ocean, where he was recovered unharmed. On November 29, 1961, the United States placed a chimpanzee named Enos into orbit and recovered him alive after two complete orbits around Earth. Like the Soviets, who usually used dogs, the United States had to obtain information on the effects of space flight on living beings before they could actually launch a human into space. Who was the first woman in space? Valentina V. Tereshkova Nikolava, 1937, a Soviet cosmonaut, was the first woman in space. She was aboard the Vostok 6, launched June 16, 1963. She spent three days circling Earth, completing 48 orbits. Although she had little cosmonaut training, she was an accomplished parachutist. And was especially fit for the rigors of space travel. The U.S. space program did not put a woman in space until 20 years later when, on June 18, 1983, Sally K. Ride, 1951 flew aboard the Space Shuttle Challenger mission STS-7 in 1987. She moved to the administrative side of NASA and was instrumental in issuing the Ride Report, which recommended future missions and direction for NASA. She retired from NASA in August 1987 to become a research fellow at Stanford University after serving on the presidential commission that investigated the Challenger disaster in 1986. She was a physics professor at the University of California San Diego until 2001 when she founded Sally Ride Science. The company is dedicated to supporting girls' and boys' interests in science, math, and technology by showing science is fun with a variety of programs.
who was the first woman in space. Valentina V. Tereshkova Nikolava, 1937, a Soviet cosmonaut, was the first woman in space. She was aboard the Vostok 6, launched June 16, 1963. She spent three days circling Earth, completing 48 orbits. Although she had little cosmonaut training, she was an accomplished parachutist. And was especially fit for the rigors of space travel. The U.S. space program did. Not put a woman in space until 20 years later when, on June 18, 1983, Sally K. Ride, 1951, flew aboard the Space Shuttle Challenger mission STS-7. In 1987, she moved to the administrative side of NASA and was instrumental in issuing the Ride Report which recommended future missions and direction for NASA. She retired from NASA in August 1987 to become a research fellow at Stanford University after serving on the Presidential Commission that investigated the Challenger disaster in 1986. She was a physics professor at the University of California San Diego until 2001 when she founded Sally Ride Science. The company is dedicated to supporting girls' and boys' interests in science, math, and technology by showing science is fun with a variety of programs. What were the first words spoken by an astronaut after touchdown of the lunar module on the Apollo 11 flight? And by an astronaut standing on the moon? In July 20, 1969, at 4 hours 17 minutes and 43 seconds p. M. Eastern Daylight Time, 20 hours 17 minutes and 43 seconds Greenwich Mean Time, Neil A. Armstrong, 1930. And Edwin E. Aldrin, Jr., 1930, landed the lunar module Eagle on the Moon Sea of Tranquility. And Armstrong radioed, Houston, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Several hours later, when Armstrong descended the lunar module ladder and made the small jump between the eagle and the lunar surface. He announced, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. The article A was missing in the live voice transmission. And was later inserted in the record to amend the message to one small step for a man. What were the first words spoken by an astronaut after touchdown of the lunar module on the Apollo 11 flight? And by an astronaut standing on the moon? In July 20, 1969, at 4 hours 17 minutes and 43 seconds p. M. Eastern Daylight Time, 20 hours 17 minutes and 43 seconds Greenwich Mean Time, Neil A. Armstrong, 1930. And Edwin E. Aldrin, Jr., 1930, landed the lunar module Eagle on the Moon Sea of Tranquility. And Armstrong radioed, Houston, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Several hours later, 
when Armstrong descended the lunar module ladder and made the small jump between the eagle and the lunar surface. He announced, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. The article A was missing in the live voice transmission. And was later inserted in the record to amend the message to one small step for a man. Who were the first man and woman to walk in space? On March 18, 1965, the Soviet cosmonaut Alexei Leonov, 1934, became the first person to walk in space when he spent 10 minutes outside his Fosco 2 spacecraft. The first woman to walk in space was Soviet cosmonaut Svetlana Savitskaya, 1947, who during her second flight aboard the Soyuz T-12, July 17, 1984, performed 3.5 hours of extravehicular activity. The first American to walk in space was Edward White II, 1930-1967, from the spacecraft Gemini 4 on June 3. 1965 White spent 22 minutes floating free attached to the Gemini by a lifeline. The photos of white floating in space are perhaps some of the most familiar of all space shots. Catherine D. Sullivan 1951, became the first American woman to walk in space when she spent 3.5 hours outside the Challenger orbiter during the Space Shuttle Mission 41G on October 11, 1984. American astronaut Bruce McCandless II, 1937, performed the first untethered spacewalk from the Space Shuttle Challenger on February 7, 1984, using an MMU, Manual Maneuvering Unit, backpack. Who were the first man and woman to walk in space? On March 18, 1965, the Soviet cosmonaut Alexei Leonov, 1934, became the first person to walk in space when he spent 10 minutes outside his Fosco 2 spacecraft. The first woman to walk in space was Soviet cosmonaut Svetlana Savitskaya, 1947, who during her second flight aboard the Soyuz T-12, July 17, 1984, performed 3.5 hours of extravehicular activity. The first American to walk in space was Edward White II, 1930-1967, from the spacecraft Gemini 4 on June 3. 1965 White spent 22 minutes floating free attached to the Gemini by a lifeline. The photos of White floating in space are perhaps some of the most familiar of all space shots. Catherine D. Sullivan 1951, became the first American woman to walk in space when she spent 3.5 hours outside the Challenger orbiter during the Space Shuttle Mission 41G on October 11, 1984. American astronaut Bruce McCandless II, 1937, performed the first untethered spacewalk from the Space Shuttle Challenger on February 7, 1984, using an MMU, Manual Maneuvering Unit, backpack.
What are some of the accomplishments of female astronauts? First American woman in space, Sally K. Ride June 18, 1983, aboard Challenger STS-7. First American woman to walk in space, Catherine D. Sullivan October 11, 1984, aboard Challenger STS-41G. First woman to make three space flights, Shannon W. Lucid June 17, 1985, October 18, 1989, and August 2, 1991. First African American woman in space. May Carol Jemison September 12, 1992, aboard Endeavour. First American woman space shuttle pilot. Eileen M. Collins February 3, 1995, aboard Discovery. What are some of the accomplishments of female astronauts? First American woman in space, Sally K. Ride June 18, 1983, aboard Challenger STS-7. First American woman to walk in space, Catherine D. Sullivan October 11, 1984, aboard Challenger STS-41G. First woman to make three space flights. Shannon W. Lucid June 17, 1985, October 18, 1989, and August 2, 1991. First African American woman in space. May Carol Jemison September 12, 1992, aboard Endeavour. First American woman space shuttle pilot. Eileen M. Collins February 3, 1995, aboard Discovery. What material was used in the U.S. flag planted on the moon by astronauts Neil Armstrong and Edwin Aldrin Jr.? The astronauts erected a 3 by 5 foot, 0.9 by 1.5 meter, nylon U. S flag, its top edge braced by a spring wire to keep it extended. What material was used in the U? S flag planted on the moon by astronauts Neil Armstrong and Edwin Aldrin Jr. The astronauts erected a 3 by 5 foot, 0.9 by 1.5 meter, nylon U. S flag, its top edge braced by a spring wire to keep it extended. What was the first meal on the moon? American astronauts Neil A. Armstrong and Edwin E. Aldrin Jr. ate four bacon squares, three sugar cookies, peaches, pineapple grapefruit drink, and coffee before their historic moonwalk on July 20, 1969.
What was the first meal on the moon? American astronauts Neil A. Armstrong and Edwin E. Aldrin Jr. ate four bacon squares, three sugar cookies, peaches, pineapple grapefruit drink, and coffee before their historic moonwalk on July 20, 1969. Who made the first golf shot on the moon? Alan B. Shepard Jr., commander of Apollo 14, launched on January 31, 1971, made the first golf shot. He attached a six iron to the handle of the contingency sample return container. Dropped a golf ball on the moon, and took a couple of one-handed swings. He missed with the first, but connected with the second. The ball, he reported, sailed for miles and miles. Who made the first golf shot on the moon? Alan B. Shepard Jr., commander of Apollo 14, launched on January 31, 1971, made the first golf shot. He attached a six iron to the handle of the contingency sample return container. Dropped a golf ball on the moon, and took a couple of one-handed swings. He missed with the first, but connected with the second. The ball, he reported, sailed for miles and miles. Who is considered the founder of systematic astronomy? The Greek scientist Hipparchus, c. 190 to 120 BCE, is considered to be the father of systematic astronomy. He measured as accurately as possible the directions of objects in the sky. He compiled the first catalog of stars, containing about 850 entries, and designated each star's celestial coordinates, indicating its position in the sky. Hipparchus also divided the stars according to their apparent brightness or magnitudes. <laughs>